Now don't think we ain't gonna talk about the slave trade. We definitely about to hit that a little bit. <laughs> For my people. This ain't what you want, this ain't what you want. This ain't what you want, this ain't what you want. Let's get to it. Mm. 10 to 12 million Africans were brought over to the Americas. Yeah, Jamestown, founded by your boy, John Smith. The crops grown in the new colonies were sugarcane, tobacco, and cotton. There were not enough settlers and indentured servants to do the job. But you know, shit, they, they didn't want to do it, you know. Our black asses came in. <laughs> you guys are good. <laughs> we got this. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't that happy. Yeah, yeah. They actually went to the African kings and, you know, people that were in power in Africa. And in exchange for people, <laughs> they offered rum, money, goods and um, weapons for a person's life. And the African kings and merchants, they, they gave in and just let them go. But just people that they viewed as criminals or people that owed money or prisoners of war from rival tribes until everybody was damn captured. The slaves were branded and a lot of them died on the ships. You know, they were starving. Some of them actually jumped over ship um, because they didn't know what was going on. Some of them actually never seen white people before and thought white people were like, they were like, oh my God, the devil, oh my God, what is that, what is that? They're cannibals, they're gonna eat us. It was different, it was new for them. And they... Virginia's really, really popular during this time for slavery. That's all they did was wanna keep slaves. On a lot of the Virginia plantations controlled by England, European and Irish indentured servants mixed freely with the African slaves. They worked together, played together, and played <laughs> together. Most indentured servants, who were not considered property unlike African slaves were, they were usually freed after seven years. Frustrated with the elites, the tidewater aristocrats, part of the House of Burgess, and the governor, Sir William Berkeley, Nathaniel Bacon, Bacon led a rebellion demanding land, more control over their lives, a greater democracy, and more protection against the Native Americans even though the elites had a secret deal with him. He ends up dying of dysentery, ending the rebellion. However, this scares the shit out of the elites because they realize the workers and slaves can come together to overthrow them. Chaos, ah, that's the word, that's a good word. Chaos is a very important thing within American history. And this rebellion and a lot of the chaos results into new early colonial laws beginning to appear, strategically separating black slaves from European indentured servants. Slavery becomes permanent for Negroes, and black people are punished more harshly for crimes. Damn, history repeats itself in a weird, interesting way. Don't boo, vote! The poor whites, you know, the ex-indentured servants, are given new rights and opportunities, many turning into overseers to police slaves. You know, those guys on the plantations with the whip. White poor people who were once indentured slaves, who were once slaves themselves, becomes oppressors for another group of people based on the color of their skin. And then slavery actually becomes permanent for, for, um, for blacks. Oh, and um, by the way, I ain't learned none of this shit in school. And if I did, <laughs> Mr. Garbage, don't remember.